Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you are watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Joining me, as always, are my co-hosts from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Rebellious D and Double OT. How you guys doing today? I like that new one. I like mm, it, too. That rolls like all that. the time. The roll Double all the time. O-T. Double mm. OT. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, you know they used to call Michael Double <laughs> Yeah, double O hey, something, but we ain't going. Don't talk about Michael neither. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, we do. I like mm-hmm. you got double O T and double O M. But uh, j- joining us on today's episode is a uh, professional voice actor, Mr. Karen Reagan. How you doing today, Karen? I'm doing pretty good. How about y'all? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. We talking about Michael. We talking about Bruno, and we talking about 007. We got the whole we thing talking going about on right now. Yes, you know, I got I got my boy D over here looking like the uh, the male version of Spinelli from Recess. Like, oh yeah, oh, man, good callback. Ooh, hey, we go oh, all out on today. Oh my God, what a burn, bro! My no, that's, that's not, not a burn. burn. That's respect. That's respect. Hey, but that's, uh, you, you ain't taking that's no not what Banks was saying off air. Hey, burn a burn is not being able to see what you got behind you, Trav. That's what oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah, You heard what your boy uh, Sean Chiplock <laughs> said. He, all he could see was the emblem on your jacket. <laughs> that's right. And that's all you need to see. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm taking it easy. Mystery. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy. Well, Karen, I mean, Sorry, as, I'm gonna lose it. as you can see, this is what we do up here on the podcast. So before we get into today's interview, everybody that's watching, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, like you tell everybody on every episode. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel, podcast in the description, and thank you for watching and listening. That's, and right. listening. That's all you got to do. That's yeah, all you got to do. And don't that's talk it, about Bruno. Oh. And don't talk about Bruno, please. Don't talk about Bruno. Thanks. So, Karen, something that we like to do up here on every episode is we like to ask <clears> our guests, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has mm. one. So tell everybody who Karen Reagan is. Well, uh, origin story in life or just origin story in voice acting? There's a difference. Take <laughs> us back to the beginning. Yeah, you're about life. <laughs> I was yes. born. I was born a twin. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Is Michael, is your brother's name Michael? No, Connor, sadly. Oh, Ooh, wow. close. It was close. Ooh, yeah. Close. Hey, close. We close. know a lot of Connors, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Mm hmm. Well, I uh, was born, and then I am here. Uh, no, <laughs> I heard that. You were about to say you were born in Bel Air? No, oh, man. No, I was born in Southern California. Uh, grew up in SoCal for most of my life. And All then, right. Um, once I graduated high school, I went to college at the University of Kansas to pursue a degree in graphic design and photography nice. because I was very mm. much a visual artist kind of guy. Um, okay. And then college killed that drive and killed that spirit. Um, although I, one of my prouder moments, I did get a gallery when I was nineteen. So I was wow, really that's awesome, man. That. Yeah, hey, thanks. Banks, Banks loves galleries. Yeah, I love going to galleries, yeah. man. It's uh, it's one in downtown Norfolk here where we stay at, and oh, yeah? uh, it's called uh, Gallery U Quincy, and he's always having phenomenal art up in there. So that's awesome that you had your own gallery, man. Thanks, man. I love galleries. I used to go to them like as a kid. You know, hey. field trips and what's not, not after school programs because my parents work nine to fives kind of deal. Uh-huh. Um, but so I went to school at the University of Kansas and about my third year, I was getting burnt out from graphic design and burnt out from photography. And I was taking a public speaking course with one of my teachers. His name is David Reese. Uh, and David was like, hey, you, you'd be good at this whole acting thing you should try auditioning for the show and i did i spent so long on that audition because i'm a freaking perfectionist and then i got cast in a different show with a different person with somebody i had never talked to before and i was playing like the hardest role i've ever had to play just mentally speaking um it was for theater this was before covid the pre-pandemic um And after that, like there were situations uh, that happened in theater that sort of changed my life and changed my perspective. And once once that show was done, it was something I couldn't quit. You know what I mean? It was something that I'm like, I have to keep doing this. I have to satisfy that itch. Um, 
And so I kept working at it. And over the next year or so left that I had at college, I did as much theater that I could. But then in the last year, COVID hit real hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once COVID hit, I'm stuck at home. I can't do theater. I can't do any on-camera stuff. Well, I've always loved anime and I've always loved, you know, cartoons. I grew up on Studio Ghibli. My mom had a six disc set growing up. And I, my favorite of the Ghibli is, is uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Um, that one or Princess Mononoke, but that was terrifying to eight-year-old little me. Uh, <laughs> and so I know, I know DC here thinking I know banks don't know anything that this guy's talking about, <laughs> which is wild. Look, they're classics. They're classics. I know they are. I mean, I've only seen uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, and uh, I seen Princess Mononoke, but I don't remember it because I That's watched fair. it when I was younger. But I, I mm. remember Kiki's Delivery Service. Kiki I mean, it's fair. It's fair if you don't quite remember stuff, dude. We're we're aging like wine. You know what I mean? That is true. <laughs> Fine wine. Yeah, that like some true. of the stuff like came out. Name. Like, hey, hey like, thanks for the thanks true. for the backup, man. I appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, I'll give you tonight. Just tonight, <laughs> everybody gets one. <laughs> but um, oh, Shia LaBeouf, I think, voices <clears throat> the main male protagonist <clears throat> in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. So, if you want some cool Shia history, there you go. Uh, <laughs> it, is. it is it's crazy mm -hmm. now let here let me ask you something mm -hmm. was did this movie originally already come out or did it come out and it was dubbed by disney because i know that there were a lot of uh studio ghibli movies that came out before they were with disney right and i'm they not redubbed entirely it? certain <clears throat> that's something yeah. i don't i don't think that one was okay. dubbed before disney okay but um, you know, once COVID hit, uh, I was like, how do I still do this acting thing? So I did a mm -hmm. bunch of research into voiceover. I just dove headfirst into it, um, got my phone and started auditioning from there. And I did about 400 auditions before I got called back on anything. So on your phone? Mm. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I did about three on my phone. And then I got one message on, I think it was Casting Call Club, where the guy's like, your quality sucks. What are right. you doing? And I'm like, oh, you're right. So yeah, uh, lots of stuff. But then yeah, Casting Call Club, you know, we all have that that phase. Uh, I graduated college, still COVID. I couldn't really do a whole lot. So I got a nine to five. And then in the hours between five and midnight, I would do voiceover if I could. Uh, and it all sort of came to a head where I lost my job. Uh, at my nine to five, I was working uh, packaging so <clears throat> for FedEx. I was uh, right. taping the boxes of the signs for protesters and stuff like that. So you see a lot of crazy shit there. <laughs> Some people. Um, but once I lost that job, I uh, sort of dove headfirst into fully into voiceover. I had saved up about three months rent. I'm like, I got three months to make this thing work in Kansas where rent is so small in comparison to LA. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. I was paying $3.95 out there for my place. And, and out, here I'm paying, out here I'm paying ugh, too much. Um, yeah. But that night I booked like my first like really good paying gig as an audiobook. Nice. That's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. Then from there it was just straight hard work and doing all that stuff but i never wanted to be an actor it was never something right. that like i grew up wanting to do it was just something that mm. interested me in college and sort of the two worlds collided when two worlds <laughs> collide you know what i mean nice uh, oh yeah nice we reference know. too i i yeah. can't remember the, yeah. the band that that did that song but i remember it was on one oh of well the you're talking about power man 5000 thank you trap because that song was on SmackDown versus Raw back when I was a teenager. And I remember we used to get hyped listening to that when we played a game. But, you know, Karen, I think that that's awesome that, you know, voice acting is something that you kind of, you know, fell in love with when you were in school. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you know, some people that we have up here, it's like they say that, you know, voice acting was something that they always wanted to do. You know, growing up watching cartoons or playing video games, I know because, you know, I recently just did a voice acting class and, 
that's one of the reasons why I've always wanted to be a voice actor is because, you know, just growing up, watching anime, playing video games, I always thought that it was cool hearing these voices on screen. And, you know, a lot of these people, they went on to, you know, be, I guess you could say like household names in <clears throat> the nerd world when it comes to voice acting. Yes, um, absolutely. But, but I and also too, something else I wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying in your origin was how you were saying when you were doing the um, auditions and whatnot, and they said that your quality sounded bad. And the uh, class that I had did with Matthew David Rudd, who we did mm -hmm. interview, and you can listen to his episode or you can watch the video on our uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that he was telling all of us is that you want to make sure that you have a really good microphone because the microphone that you had back in the day, you know, it wasn't a good one, but the one that you have right now, which Trav knows what it is, like that's a good mm -hmm. microphone. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's what's gonna get you the big bucks in the voice the acting. Big world. bucks. But, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna bounce off that and say. Ooh, oh, hold on. We don't say bounce. We yeah. say piggyback. Like, oh, you we say piggyback. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll piggyback <laughs> off of that then and say <laughs> the other thing that you need besides a really good microphone is a good space. Mm -hmm. uh, preach, preach, preach. Highly, That's right. highly underappreciated. If you have a really good microphone, but you're recording in your room with no sound foam or no padding or underneath your duvet, which might work for some things, but. Mm -hmm. In the end, you need a dedicated space. It's sort of like your little cave that you can that go cave. in as a little goblin. Uh -huh. Oh, I was thinking of goblin cave. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hey, hey, we don't talk yes. about the green goblin up here now. Mm -hmm. no, He's the heart, Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's it's the booth and the it's the booth and the mic and the combination yeah. of the two will get you going. Yeah, you're right. And that's something that he said, too. And I like that you had mentioned like some of the locations, because when we had interviewed Stuart Allen, whose episode that you can listen to or watch up here on our YouTube, um, you know, when we interviewed him, I believe that he was in he was underneath his stairs or something. Oh Yeah, like he was in the cover yes. with Harry he, Potter. Nah, yeah, he had the Harry Potter set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, just making sure that you have like the right area, <clears> because that's one thing that uh, Matt. Matthew David Rudd had said too, it's like, you know, being in your room, like there's just so much sound that just gets that lost just, because you're mm -hmm. in a big room compared to when you're in a small closet or something like that. And especially now with, because of the pandemic and being able to voice act from home, you need to have like a really mm -hmm. good and small split, uh, mm, sorry, good and small space. So that way mm -hmm. um, you can get all the sound when the people, the um, producers and stuff hear that stuff. You know, yeah. they don't have to do that much editing and stuff. Trav knows. Trav's a sound engineer. Hey, you I, know. Hey, mm -hmm. I, I be getting these rappers. They send me vocals they recorded in the bathroom. <laughs> no. We're going to skip that conversation. Yep. <laughs> Dang. Trav, they need to call you to clean up. It's not just clean up, man. But here, so I want to ask you, uh, what uh -huh. were some of your favorite animes that you enjoy watching when you were coming up? I was coming up, huh? Oh, man. Well, I already told you I watched a lot of Studio Ghibli. Mm -hmm. uh, Studio Ghibli was my primary source of anime mm. and then man I gotta say it was the first anime anime that I truly watched through and through I downloaded I downloaded it to my DVR mm. on Adult Swim was re remember when Sword Art Online was coming out yep. in the first few episodes yeah that was like <gasps> what is this show Sword Art right. Online was really good back then too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it was so clean. Oh, it's, yeah. it's still good. I you think know, but I, it was better. just, I just liked, yeah, it has developed, but I just really liked the original characters. It was just one of those, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Very Sword original. Art, not, mm. I was going to say, not the, you know, deviate too much, but Sword Art's kind of like Fate, the Fate mm -hmm. series, yep. where it's yeah, like, kinda. it's different every, it's not this ongoing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Story, but it's still like an ongoing JoJo's Bizarre story. Adventure, where it's a different story. Every time, hey, look at Suda. Oh, Michael! You've been going on. We inter we interrupt this broadcast. Yeah, was it the purge? The NWO about to show up. My God! Oh Lord! And we don't talk about JoJo. No, no, no! Oh, to be a bizarre adventure here, huh? <laughs> Speaking oh, of sword man. art, hey, don't say sword art. Can we skip to the next uh to yeah. the favorite anime? Uh oh. huh? They almost snatched me up. I was scared. 
Go ahead, Trav. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to bring up Spirit Chronicles because, I mean, you know, going from a kid watching anime in yeah. Studio Ghibli and then being and it and the lead, you know, that's pretty surreal. It's daunting and it's little like 15 year old me watching anime in my garage because my parents didn't like the sound of it waking up at midnight so that when my parents were asleep they're probably going to listen to this this so that i could crawl into the garage and make and turn it on to like five volume so nobody could hear what was going on you i know remember I mean? those days right right because you put the subtitles you know, on is subtitles on you gotta get it you gotta do like you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta get your fix <laughs> yeah. i mean hey, he ain't lying yo no it's I'm true just saying, i'm just saying but going from like that to i mean spirit chronicles is <sighs> when i got that email first off it was really funny because they cast me accidentally as miharu <laughs> Not Rio, right? Um, so you know the uh, the main female lead. I'm like, are you sure my voice is high? It's not <laughs> that high. Like, what's oh, going no. on here? And so when they sent <clears> the follow up <throat> email, I was thinking they're going to be like, you know, male student B or something like that. But they said Rio, and I literally like I jumped, I screamed, I ran around my little tiny bedroom, um, and. I was thinking that I was going to have to hold on to that announcement for ages for, you know, until the show came out. Right. Right. But not even a day later, freaking Crunchyroll decides to drop the drop the like five cast members that are the lead in on their website. Mm. And so I wake up and people are blowing up my phone like, bro, what the, you know, can I cuss? <laughs> Is that OK? Hey, you man, don't, everybody gets one. Hey, if you slip hey, up, everybody I gets you. one. That's right, right. big guy. Okay, everybody okay. gets one. <clears throat> I was it, like, what the beep? And then, you know, uh, it was it, from there, the experience was more like, okay, I need to make sure I don't lose the job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First, uh, yeah. I need to make sure they didn't cast the wrong person. So I did my due diligence. I watched the show. I um, read. The, I was on the Reddit for Spirit Chronicles, looking at light novel stuff. Um, so that when I eventually got in the booth, I was as prepared as I could have been with someone with basically minimal to none ADR experience. Uh, yeah, I'm just really thankful that my director was as badass as he is. He's so cool. Uh, who? Uh, what oh, company? Ahead, casted the dub for that that was uh kocha or oh, Britain, okay Lada, technically yeah yeah one thing i was going to bring up is because crunchyroll they've been on a roll <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> when it's come to you know having like their own animes that they've been putting out because uh fan of pirate princess was one that mm -hmm. came out last year which was something that i really enjoyed and you know we interviewed uh, the voice actors from that as well. Brittany Cox and uh, Nicholas Corda, they were up there on the show. Check out those interviews. And I think that, uh, you know, Crunchyroll, like they've been on a roll. I'll say it again with the animes that they've been putting out because there's another one. Um, uh, what is the, it, it's based on a movie. I'm mad I'm having a brain fart right now. Well, are you talking about the, one. are you talking about Black Lotus? Yes, Black That's Lotus. based off Blade Runner? Yeah. Blade Runner, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like, how is that? Because... I mean, like I said, Crunchyroll is on a roll, and that's yeah. something. Well, I'm a that... huge Blade Runner fan, so I find it incredible. It's, it's good. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and but I think that that's cool that a lot of companies, because I know Netflix was doing it, where it's like they would just have like animes that were specifically made for Netflix, and they were bangers. And I'm glad mm -hmm. that Crunchyroll is able to, you know, do the same thing and put out animes that you know are short, have a nice yep. story, and then people can get invested without it being like a long running anime, like One Piece or anything like yeah. that. You Whoa, know? easy. On. But I do understand. Yeah, it's okay, Trav. Just let him go. Oh, he's got to throw it in there. But I, I do think that that is a point of emphasis is that like it's easier for people to get on board with shorter projects nowadays, especially. And people just kind of eat that stuff up because of how much exposure you have too. like, it's so easy compared to when we were growing up. You know, if you missed it, you missed it. Yeah. But now it's just like you could tap in with, to whatever you want, you know? So, 
Well, if Good I point. can was saying about, mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. Were you about to say something, Karen? No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I was, I was actually oh, going to say the, um, the way, the reason why Crunchyroll is now putting out banger after banger after banger, mm-hmm. in my mind, especially if you listen to dubs, <clears throat> is that the, um, the base quality is much higher than it was, say, in the early 2000s. You know what right. I mean? Um, and it's also becoming way more cool to like anime. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep. yep. I was Good in point. high school and, you know, we were, I wasn't a part of the group, but there was the people that cosplayed um, Attack on Titan uh, every Friday and ran around the, uh, you know, tables with their capes behind their backs. And you <laughs> know. Could have did that high school. Yeah, that's pretty I safe. Wish, yeah, I beach? wish I had the balls to do that. Hey, you know what I mean? The high school me and For, uh, D went to. The only person that was dressing like that was Michael. And yeah, look, girl, oh my, but, AJM. Well, I was going to say, we're a little bit older. So for us in high school, it was the Naruto run. You know, these oh, yeah, no question. No. No. People weren't doing the Naruto. Uh, I, oh, yeah. Kind of, when we, for when well, we for my high, high school. school. Yeah, for your high I mean, like, bro, where, the school me and D went to, you better not get caught doing no anime related stuff in the hall. There was a couple. There was a couple edgy kids that did it. Oh, and you, and you saw. There was edgy a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, they were. Uh, they were exile. I like, how, I like how there was like a select group of few anime runners in every yeah. single <laughs> high school. Yeah, every, hey, everybody's got them. And I was just there. screaming really loud and acting like I was going Super Saiyan. That's all. Yeah, that was, was the first thing. And 20 <laughs> years later, you still, still doing the same. Doing still doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, now I'm not going Super Saiyan. I'm going uh, plus, ultra. plus Ultra. Plus Ultra. Plus yeah, we know, ultra. Banks. We hey. know. Look at him. He's so happy. And our boy screams for a living, too, if you ain't seen the videos. Uh, yeah, Uh-oh. I've seen. I've seen the video. Uh-huh. Are you referencing that one YouTube video that I posted? I am referencing that one. I am. <laughs> oh, I hate that video so much. Hey, it's out there for the world to see. Out there the for ether. the world to see. It is. It is. Mm. You know, I, sh- I should unlist that. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's doing when he leaves. Yeah, All right, now, guys. You said something, Trav. Now you're going to do it. But no, <laughs> I, I mean, I just think that it's cool. To, you know, piggyback on what you were saying, Karen, about uh, Crunchyroll releasing and stuff, you know, going back to what I was saying about Netflix, because I told Ditas that I just love the fact that you have the availability to either watch something subbed or dubbed when it initially mm-hmm. comes out. Because I know that there's still uh, like some animes that come out where like My Hero Academia, for example, where it's just like the sub, because Tri- you were saying that it would always be like a week or two weeks behind. Yeah, a week dub. behind. Yeah, and I just love that you can watch the app, Crunchyroll or Netflix, uh, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6 right now. <clears throat> it's like everything dropped at one time. So you can yeah. just you can just watch it, either subbed or dubbed. And Simul I think dub. that that's, yeah, that should Simul be the future dub. for anime. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Like, and now, let me ask you this, Karen, because, mm-hmm. you know, like I just said, with JoJo, everything was already said and done when it came out on Netflix. Like, what's the process behind that? You know what I'm saying? Like, for yeah. um, Spirit Chronicles, did you have to wait for everything to be dubbed and the Japanese dub first, or? So the show was actually already out before mm, okay. I, you know, before we even started dubbing, which is great because then that gives me reference for what they're going to be doing. Um, <clears throat> but the process of dubbing is. Um, it's tedious and complex and necessary are the three words that I would use. Um, because you know, you know what a bad dub is like, right? Like we've all heard them. They're all like their voices go outside of the flaps. Their voices don't match the characters. Their energy levels are way too high because it's anime. We must be all the way up here. You know, that kind of thing. But with Spirit Chronicles specifically, since I was the lead, oftentimes I was leading the way through the dub, in a sense. So I would be playing off of nobody. I would read the line that was before me if it was like, hey, Rio, how are you? But I would have to imagine how that person would say it and then say it while matching the flaps of Rio. It was it's this really complex um, system uh that again i was i was thrown headfirst into it i had to learn on the first day sink or swim 
So, yeah, man. And it's crazy because a lot of people we have come up here, it's like they got brought in and they did like additional voices in Walla for like a year or two before. And yeah. then, like you just said, you were just th thrustered into this lead role. <laughs> yeah. Go. But, yeah. and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to sit up here and fluff you or anything, but when you go and listen to your work, it's insane that you really only been doing this for like two, three years or something, because you just got a natural talent, dude, for, Thanks, bro. I appreciate for that. voice acting. Like when, when I listen to the, like, you just know what to do. And I think that's the difference between a, somebody who's a really, really great voice actor and somebody that's just like good interesting interesting i mean thank you i really appreciate yeah. it you know that, that that means a lot I, it's, it's you know i work hard on it it's not something mm. that just comes naturally to me you know what i mean if i'm gonna get real here for a second like there have been times where i'm like sitting in the bottom of my booth fucking bawling my eyes out because i can't get the line the way i want it or the way i hear right. it in my head you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you like seek perfection you see yeah exactly yeah. See, but that's the it's the beauty of acting and the beauty of voice acting in particular nothing is perfect it's human speech you yep. know it sways it breaks sometimes you mm -hmm. know it's 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 imperfect but it's trying voice acting is channeling that imperfection into something that's um like an auditory delicacy you know what yep. i mean Mm -hmm. I, I've, been, I've been watching Cowboy Bebop recently. Hey. Um, Hold on, what's the anime or the live action? I, I'm talking about the anime. All oh, right. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and look, I got to say, I could listen to Steve Bloom for... Oh, yeah, for sure. For I wish he'd read me a book, a bedtime story every night. <laughs> I wonder if I was a millionaire, he, I'd pay him. to do it, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I wonder if he's done bro. an audio book. It'd be sweet. I mean, I'd, I would... Man, that's something to check into. Mm. I, I'm huge, you know. You know, I'm a delivery driver, and uh, that's mm. something I listen to a lot of audiobook. And yeah. uh, no way. Listen right now, I'm listening to the Witcher novels right now. But it's just, it's just some some people's voices just, you know, they just set the roles off, you know, and they yeah. just mm. it just. It's a form of art at the end of the day. Like I'm an artist myself. And when I draw sometimes, like if I'm designing like an anime character, if that's what I sit down to do. It has to look right. Or I'll just sit there for the longest exactly. time. You'll ball up a couple people, you know, and it's just, that's just how it goes. Kobe. Exactly. Kobe. <laughs> hey, D, you know, I, I really appreciate that, man. Cause you know, you're always listening to my voice too. So I, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah, I know. He loves it. I was, I was telling him. D mm -hmm. because D is a notorious audiobook listener, and I was yes. telling him he really needs to check out Warriors of McGliff. Oh, I will try. Oh, really? That was Put my first ever project. I am... that was your first ever. That's that's what I'm saying. Did, yeah, you were just like born to be a voice actor. I really enjoyed that whole podcast. You I've did. been really getting into like the story podcast God stuff. Dang. Me and Banks were talking about the Batman stuff they've been doing, mm -hmm. and now there's a Star Wars one. But mm. it's so cool listening to these, and they got all the sound effects coming yeah. in, and Amen. you can hear the fighting and people yelling in the background. And these things are so cool, and I really enjoyed that. Mm. that work and that's crazy that was your first yeah that was my the first thing i ever got cast in it was wow. that and then i got cast in this nyu project it was like a 15 minute pilot for an audio drama where i played uh pal a friendly robot that definitely wasn't hell-bent on killing everyone um, <laughs> <laughs> or no, he would not do that <laughs> <laughs> but but um yeah, Warriors of McGlyph is the first project that you you went into. Yo, you went, you dove deep. Holy <laughs> hell. That's, that's, what, that's what we do up here. That's what we do around hot here. Hot dang, hot dang. Well, I appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. I do audiobooks. I yeah. love audiobooks. I've, that's how I'm... That's how I make my income is yeah. doing audiobooks for uh you know Audible uh through ACX or We Here is a, a a platform that I've been I've been a consistent narrator with for a while now. Uh -huh. Um so yeah. <clears throat> Love me a good audiobook. I was going to say I know you do uh the education stuff too. Mm, I do take classes. Yeah. Yeah man. Uh, uh yeah. Oh no, uh I was just something earlier what were we talking about workshops or whatever but 
Um, I also do like the same. Well, we were talking about Steve Bloom, and like mm. you know, I know a lot of voice actors take v workshops with like bigger voice actors, more seasoned, so they could you know constantly like refine you know their machine or whatever yeah. but i do the same thing like for mixing and recording and i was taking these classes with this uh like studio guy that was recording specifically for commercial and radio spots and the dude that he had was steve bloom Oh, wow. and, and Steve Bloom came in no and he was way. doing all the examples and they were running Steve Bloom through different ways to say what was on the sheet and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, that's Steve Bloom. Like, I'm taking this random class and here comes Steve Bloom just shows up in this guy's studio and they're doing it. And I'm like, I feel like I was one of the only people. I was about to ask, Steve were you the Bloom only one that was just like, oh, yeah. snap. Like, I'm the only yeah, person that knows who this guy, guy is. is. Mm -hmm. You know, Trav, yeah. I want to. I want to piggyback off of that because that's something that uh, Matthew David Rudd was saying in his class, because I wanted the classmates in the class I was in. He had asked, you know, when do you think that you're ready to stop taking classes and to actually try and, you know, put yourself out there? And one of the things that he said is that it's always good to take classes because you may learn something that, you know, mm -hmm. something small that you might have you know, been messing up on that you need to work on, you could learn yep. in a small mm -hmm. class. And he recommended that you only do the big classes if this if you're ready to make the next step. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like if, mm -hmm. if you've gone to like a lot of the cheaper classes and you know you feel that you've learned enough in those classes and you want to learn more, then you want to take the next step into the bigger yeah. classes. But you don't want to take like somebody like me. Like, it would be cool to take the next step and go to a bigger class, but it's like, if I'm still learning, you know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like a bigger class, while I would learn a lot, it's like, I'm still Too not much. ready to, you know, get yeah. into voice acting like that, you know what I'm saying? I learned my lesson when I went to that William Regal seminar, so I, I know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you I, have to know when you're ready. And, and you uh, didn't say the famous line, you know, to preface that. What? Oh, you I'm always hit it with that because you know i'm a professional wrestler and <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> trav cookie he ain't hey, hit us with the trav, setup this time i thought you were gonna hit us with the setup yeah i, I tried i was waiting on well, it well i mean but... we talking about voice acting you know what i'm uh, saying essentially I, I... you're always a student and you're always a teacher that's how that's you right. should always perceive your profession you know somebody's always going to show you something new you know mm -hmm. So. I like that, man. Yeah, you be learning a lot of stuff in recess, man. I like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, no question. <laughs> you, you too, Albert. You too. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Hey. I got oh, you. Oh, man. But, wow. you know, since we're talking about recess and stuff, yes. and, like, usually in recess, you play video games. I wanted to bring up Ultimate Arcade Recess, Warriors. you doing? Yeah, bro, who's school? Hey, bro, I at the boys. Man, I know where you. I was about to say, I know what school he went to play, boy. <laughs> I don't remember playing no video games. I don't know what this guy talking about. <laughs> I man had the book bag over oh, there. The I want to play a PlayStation at recess. Hey, hey, remember what type? What type of game were you playing? It's an RPG. <laughs> yeah, I was RPG. playing tag. Going this man was playing Final Fantasy. Yeah, hey, I ain't know what. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, but um, I wanted to bring up Ultimate Arcade Warriors. Now, that's another project that you worked on. Mm -hmm. And I just want to ask you, like, how was it coming on to that show? Because, I mean, like, the whole premise, like, with mm -hmm. arcades and stuff, like, that's something that I loved doing back in the day. It's something oh, yeah. that I still love to do now because there are, you know, arcades still here in the area. They're not as good as they used to be back in the day. But mm -hmm. I just want to talk about Ultimate Arcade Warriors a little bit. Well, I love uh, yeah, Akato, Ultimate Arcade Warriors. We love them. Um, I, <laughs> I love arcade games first and foremost. Uh, so, I had the high score on Galaga in my hometown. Just saying. Hey, uh, that's pretty sick. Yeah, man. We that's got a superstar sweet. in the building. Yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Hey, hey, hometown legend. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, Akedo is really fun because it's an animated project on YouTube and the, premise is it's set in a vr world where anybody from anywhere can come in and battle kind of like pokemon or digimon i was or... gonna say sword art i would sword say art. sword art dot yeah. Hat. yeah 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 mm -hmm. Ralph. Um, I, 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 what's uh any of the fighting games too street fighter street all that fighter, stuff. yeah mm -hmm. you know? tekken we know yeah. a guy <laughs> hey banks we know a guy who knows a guy right uh-huh right mm -hmm. So. Uh, but it was really cool because um, the company that runs it is out of Australia 
and the main three actors for it one's australian one's british and i'm out here in good old kansas and so <laughs> it's this really like everybody sort of coming together uh and it was the first real breakdown of the idea that you need to be in la to do this you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. like no no you don't you can you can technically be anywhere in the world you just gotta find the right opportunities and deliver so especially now that's mm -hmm. the blessing for covid is a lot of you guys got the setup now yeah. at the house and you know mm -hmm. that alleviates yep bills that the company has to spend because not only are they paying you by the hour they're also paying the studio by the hour so that alleviates that studio thing and they can invest those dollars <laughs> maybe more into you guys or elsewhere in the project promotion you know to get it out there more and exactly. you know, especially now anime is so convoluted like we get so much back 20 years ago we didn't get enough yeah, now man. it's almost too much and projects get lost because exactly. there's just so many projects out mm -hmm. i mean you you know we're talking about simul dubs earlier to mm -hmm. piggyback off of yeah that idea. there we go uh <laughs> see um the pro the wonderful wonderfully problematic thing about simul dubs is you're dubbing it at supersonic speed right you know what i mean it's not like you have it's not like you're um in uh, encanto where uh you have oh, four months to get the lines right and yeah. you know you have the scripts in front of you and you can work with your partners and all that stuff it's like now you're in the booth you have to deliver within one to two takes or ideally less than four and then move on because we got we got we got time that we need to spend wisely so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah well, uh, i want to say when we had morgan barry up here which say it banks you could check out that episode right here on the I don't youtube have to say, you can say it, right? Trav, I, I, Trav, I, I, Trav, hit him up yeah hey, Trav, hey, i you said it all right. yeah. Trav, spit that hot hot fire Trav. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but, hey bro you gotta let people know about the episodes man hey That's it's right. true but she was just saying that if you're on a show like that that's getting simul dubs pretty much any sort of vacation like that stuff's out the window dude mm -hmm. you're working for that you're period that, mm -hmm. those weeks those months that that season's ongoing and yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's strict yeah, yeah because my... wasn't she saying something along the lines of uh like she had to fly to texas or she ended up just moving to texas if it wasn't her it was somebody else that we interviewed where it's like they just went ahead and relocated to Texas because it costs more money to, you know, travel there and back home. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just good that because of COVID, unfortunately, you know, you can have a nice setup at home and you can do stuff and then you can just keep on putting out a lot of stuff. Because like Trav said, I mean, we live in a world now where it's too much anime. Like there's something coming out every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that mm -hmm. and all I can say is that that's a blessing too, because you know, coming up, it's like we only had fighting whatever was on too. Tsunami or oh, yeah, Adult yeah. Swim, you know, and now yeah, the genre, the genre yeah. was real limited too. It was just yeah. fighting. Yeah, now you that's, got that's everything. something I always point at too, Trav. We're getting, we're like getting anime musicals now. Yeah, yeah. musicals, yeah, dramas, that. horror stories. Mm -hmm. uh, Have you guys heard about Bell? No, mm -hmm. I haven't heard oh. about that. But, hey. Oh, it's an anime uh, musical movie, mm. and the singing is beautiful. They did they did another thing. I think okay. Here's the thing, right now that um, you know, COVID has sort of globalized yep. the entire anime market. People right. from all over the world can audition, and what that means mm. is people like me and people like the lead female for Bell can just hop in on a show or hop in on a movie or just hop in wow. and have the not not have that experience but have the booth have the equipment have the setup and then just do it you know when we're, when we're talking back in like 2015 or before that it's the same voice actors you see everywhere yeah. right now since it's so global there's sort of this idea that literally if you have the talent the hard work the patience the dedication and the resources to be able to do something like this you can feasibly do it you yeah. know what i mean right you know i did it from kansas yeah so. that's why i really want to get into it man you know yeah. what i'm saying because it's just another uh tool in the toolbox that you add to what you're already doing in life you know that's right I mean? 
We mm. got the podcast. I want to start doing voice acting. I'm doing yeah, wrestling man. whenever I can. All right, Hawkeye. Uh, you know, you got arrows for everything. You got to have arrows for everything. <laughs> arrows for everything. Just to, just to piggyback off of uh, the Bell anime, I see it's a movie and it's actually in theaters right now. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Amazing! It's beautiful. I want to see it so bad. It reminds me of Summer Wars. If y'all ever oh, saw Summer Wars, yeah, I've Don't seen worry. Summer Wars. I'm gonna put Bell on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. hit me up yeah. afterwards. Let me know. Hey, what you no think. question. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> for uh, sure. What was the anime you showed me, D? Baslick. Uh, Basculus. Basculus. Yeah. Yep. Um, Japan does a lot of that stuff. Like, cause this is this Bell is obviously based off a. Uh, Beauty and the Beast and stuff. Yeah. But okay, that's what I was going to ask. Before, like, they got a Romeo and Juliet yep. anime mm-hmm. out that I have on DVD where it's like yep. they'll take the premise of what it is but change it up and make yeah, it more make it an anime. anime-like. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's good, though, when I mean, people like, that's do what things I'm, like that. Like, looking at the picture, that's what it looks like. I mean, it's a dragon instead of uh, a beast. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you know. It's pretty sweet. Well, I mean, the thing that true, it, it's, it's also storytelling right mm-hmm. storytelling has its tropes it has its characters and it can be uh stories can be retold in different sh- different okay. skins That's true you know mm-hmm. what i mean and so that's uh one of the things that i like to point out is how uh shakespearean anime is right um i don't know if you all ever read shakespeare but we're talking romeo and juliet um and the language is so elevated to such an extent right. and the emotions are always present they're always there and it's big right you got to do theatrical performance in shakespeare you got to do almost in anime too you got to do a lot of big yeah. performance right yeah. you got to do these crazy metal screams for charging up the arm of a minotaur or whatever right. <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. so there there's there's a lot of overlap now, Karen, I wanted to ask you, or I wanted to make a recommendation for you. Have you ever seen uh, a silent voice on Netflix by any chance? I have seen parts of it. Um, yeah, I, I would I would say try and finish that one. And also, uh, Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop is another one that's kind of more of an, that's a really good one too, where they're kind of more like a, a drama setting. Yeah. So not, no action really. Pain, right? I was going to yes. say, if you're like me and love to, torture yourself and make yourself cry by watching these super, super yeah, they're very it's just very good things. i mean well if he's, he's in this you. studio ghibli then you know what i'm saying like, yeah like that's to, what that's I exactly like what cry. i thought of i like to cry and i have seen really a silent voice okay yeah, yeah that I one's i thought that. those there's a few of them running around there <clears throat> and also violent evergarden i've seen that i one. think yeah yep. i thought mm-hmm. that was that pretty one. good too mm-hmm. you know yeah, that one. It's, it's a good change of pace, you know, especially when it's available to us now. It's not all just straight action like we mentioned. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. I definitely say that that's something that D's kind of uh, got me on that train because it's like, you know, we're always just used to watching action and adventure Shonen. and stuff. Yeah. So. It's yeah. almost peaceful, if you yeah, will. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just a different different gear shift. Yeah. I also, I, I, I like to think too, that since the the world is becoming more open to expressing emotion, um, that me as you know uh, male presenting can sit and watch Violet Evergarden and cry. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep, it's okay, okay, okay to cry, man. It's okay yeah, man. to cry, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like yeah. I, I just watched Bolt for the first time uh, a couple of days man. ago. For real? Yeah. You know, John and, Travolta. John, hey, I cried at the end of the movie, man. I was just That's like, right. yeah, that's you know that good too, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's like, you. and I think that it's cool that you can, you know, be <clears throat> older and watch an animated film and still be sad. Like I just watch uh, Onward, and mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I love about Disney movies is that you can watch something and like somebody like Trav who might not like on- Onward. It's like somebody like me, I like it because it's like I can relate to the story that's being told, you know, and that's just the cool thing that Disney does. It's like they have it so that way that you can always relate to whatever's going on, you know, mm-hmm. or like Encanto, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, Encanto's a, yeah, big ooh, mm-hmm. Talk about, I think there were like three points in that movie where my tears welled up and then like one where I was like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> which which Madrigal did you uh, relate to the most? Ah. <laughs> oh. Which one? And well, it better considering not be Bruno. 
I'm, I'm, I'm got to say Bruno. Mm. <laughs> Just because we don't talk guy. about Bruno. Though. We don't talk. Look, all right, dudes. I don't want to spoil anything. Go That's ahead. Uh, yeah, look, okay. all right. Banks so, has already walls, ruined it for everybody. He's in the closet. He's doing his own little thing, and he's making performances with little rats. That's me. Yeah, so good. <laughs> I heard that, Bruno. <laughs> so are you telling us that uh, you know you are seven foot frame with rats along your back? I wish I was seven foot frame with rats along my back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! That's that's so sad that his nephew had never met him, and you know, he, and he instead I'm instead I'm like a five foot bird lady who's lost in New York and home <laughs> alone. You know what I mean? What? Wow. What? Oh, mean. I know that well, all too well. <laughs> <laughs> so, Karen, one thing I wanted to piggyback on and talk about was on your Twitter, you talked about uh, Jacob from Splinter City. Yeah. And like how much you love voicing him. So like, talk a little bit about Splinter City. What's that about? Splinter City, it's like, um, basically there's this individual, her name is Ryan Bell. And Ryan Bell uh, has created this world and does beautiful anim uh, like animatics um, where people's original characters go to Splinter City and fight um until they get a wish you, know, you see jacob harris yeah. right there look at my little boy he's got a little <laughs> scarf i love him um <laughs> i like jacob because it's the it's my first foray like really for an animated character that is unlike my voice right now you know yeah right. you have you have cub and akato who's like you know he's all the way up here right um and you have rio who's me and then you have Jacob, who sort of, you know, he's down here, he doesn't move his mouth a lot, he's northern <laughs> British, and um, he speaks kind of slow, right? <laughs> um, and I did it unconsciously, but I, I modeled it after my significant other, because when they're tired, they speak like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, and yeah. so I have this like heartfelt connection to this character just because, you know, they're um, a lot like me, especially when I was in high school not wanting to talk to anyone or too afraid to make the wrong impression. So I just not say anything or like be really, really like kind of, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. So I like, I like that. We love Jacob. Yeah. I mean, like looking at the art style, like Jacob. Hey, I know the guys are gonna get on me, but he reminds me of Joseph Joe Star from JoJo's uh, Bizarre Adventure. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm glad see, get, so Karen, though, yeah, Karen knows, yeah, knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, he reminds me. Of, and then with the voice that you just did, I mean, like you know, Joseph, he's you know, he's British. So I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. he he reminds me of that. And I think that that's cool that that's somebody that you know that you really enjoy voicing. I think that when it yeah. comes to voice acting, and we hear this a lot from everybody, is that they enjoy voicing everybody that they do. They don't have a favorite character. And yeah, I just really. feel like with, you know, you just getting your feet wet and being so talented <clears throat> as you are, like the uh, sky's the limit for you, man. Y'all are, y'all are beef. Y'all are like <laughs> building up my hey, ego. That's what, <laughs> hey, that's what we, <laughs> we do. Hey, we man, do. You know, hey, Trav, now I can say the line. We're like oh. Olive Garden here because when you're here, you're family. And oh, I'll send you some breadsticks eventually. I don't know when, but you'll get them. Coming though. They coming. I some random breadsticks gonna show up. He's gonna be like, what is this? It, it's not gonna say Olive Garden. It's gonna say leveling up. <laughs> leveling up. Head. And the timestamp's gonna say 2025. He's gonna be like, leveling up. Uh -huh, okay. And it's gonna have a thumbs up there. And what's mm -hmm. it gonna say, D? I'm a Mike. professional wrestler. I'm a D, professional no, wrestler. D, D is the one that always gives people the thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Why well, would it say Michael? <laughs> Mike, Michael. But so, I, go ahead. Yes. No, I was just going to say, that's what the one thing I love about art is people usually pull from different people that they know. I mean, yeah, like, life when experiences. You listen, mm -hmm. Right. Because when you listen to a song and somebody's singing that song, it doesn't necessarily mean that's their experience it could be their brother's experience yeah. and their brother's going through like a divorce and he knows the situation he's he wrote that song for him and then other people can relate to i never feel like you have to be the one that went through it in order to tell the story i mean i think it just comes down to being comfortable telling the story mm -hmm. you know whatever it may be especially if it doesn't if you're not part of if it's just something you know somebody went through mm -hmm. i think it comes down to that kind of stuff 
I think I think there's mm-hmm. also something to be said about um, being able to relate to the character yeah. and right. respect the yep. character. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, there was a, a it's it's happening more more nowadays, um, but back you know back like 10 20 years ago in voice acting it was okay it was deemed fine for uh like white people to voice people of color and now it's not yeah. because you know li- lived experiences are not shared right right mm-hmm. and so like yeah you can relate to them but it's not your place to voice that character in instances like that you know what i mean it's interesting uh-huh. I, and I, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I know that uh, me and Trav, we've had this conversation before with people up here. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think that it's it's better how it is now where it's like if you are a person of color, that you have these opportunities to voice characters that are people of color, which weren't there before. Because I told Trav, like, I was shocked when I found out because, of course, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is one of my favorite animes. And when I found out that Muhammad Abdul wasn't voiced by a black guy, I was just like, huh? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, this entire time I thought he was voiced by a black guy. You found guy. out Cleveland Brown? Uh, well, I, mean, I wasn't, as, I wasn't as surprised easy, easy, with easy. that. Yeah, I wasn't, because I, I found that out when I was younger, but Muhammad Abdul, I just always thought that he was voiced by, you know, a person of color. So I think that is good now in a lot of animes or cartoons when there are people of color that there's actually people of color that's voicing these characters. Because like Karen just said, it's just Mm -hmm. like, because they are a person of color, they know these experiences or they they have relatives that experience this stuff. So it's just like, they know that feeling compared to somebody that's not a person of color. It's just like, how can you get the full effect of something? I, um, cause I, again, I just watched the color purple for the first time. And one, yeah, yeah, really? thank you. We all made that <laughs> same that? And uh, one of the things that I had uh, read about um, Steven Spielberg was that you know he found it hard to you know be a, a white man directing a movie about people of color. So I, it's like mm-hmm. I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not something that's as easy as, as he just directed West Side Story. Yeah, you know, I mean, but this is years later now. You know, so. Well, I, you know, it's it's something that's been needing to change for a while, right? You know, like there was a whole blackface movement in the 1920s and, you know, people, uh, white people appropriating cultures throughout time. And I think now with the rise of TikTok and with the rise of the Internet specifically, those uh, communities can now gather and talk about that and bring it to the forefront and now g- make the change that is needed you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's you know, it's a work in progress i think it always will be in progress i think it always will be yeah Mm-mm, but it's i it's mean cool. mario's voiced by chris pratt so <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, sh- yeah. shout out to onward uh, <sighs> <laughs> Shout out! Uh, Jeez, coming after they coming after my man, you know. I mean, I well, he's so. not my man, but I just mean they they coming after Chris Pratt, you know. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it well, is. They come, hey, you know how they do now. Well, Scott uh, Johansson and Ghost in the Shell and all. Oh, that stuff. yeah, we don't talk uh-huh. about that. Right, we don't talk about boy, Bruno. Boy, <laughs> I, I, I mean, how much I stuff do we not talk about up here, man? I can't remember yeah, the guy uh, uh, Justin Chatwin when he uh, played Goku in Dragon Ball. You know, it's just. You know, certain stuff we just don't talk about, man. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, but D, go ahead. You were about to ask something. No, uh, Karen, uh, what if you had to give out advice on anybody who wants to do what you do, what would your one tip be? Hmm. Sound just like an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Um, <laughs> Literally. I would say. Respect to the craft. So a lot of people okay. want to get a lot of people well, I'll, I'll, want to get into anime because they grew up on it, right? They love the shows. Mm. Performing it is different, yes. right? Yeah, you for are sure. reliving your like childhood experiences, yes, but you know you have to respect the craft of the work that people like um, us do. 
you know what I mean? The people like dubbers do, or people um, who have spent the time and the money to build booths and get microphones. You have to respect that. Um, yeah. And the other piece of advice I'd give is just, it's okay to take a break. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, right? You don't ever want to suck the life no, out of whatever you're pursuing. Exactly. Don't 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 burn yourself out, man. Yeah, you know that's a huge tip. I like yeah, that. Yeah, man. Don't burn yourself out. That wow. That's the real art killer right there is burnout. So. Yeah. Want to piggyback like off it. of that because this was uh, one of my final two questions: is when you're not voice acting, like what are some of the hobbies that you like to do? Okay, I've I have a lot. <laughs> oh, I heard that. Be here. <laughs> okay, so first, you can't really see it because my mic's blocking the way, but I I play a lot of Tetris. Um, oh, sick! You know, like Interesting Tetris boards out there. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Um, I did not expect that. <laughs> hey, hey full of surprises over here, man. Look, all right, I'm just saying. Um, I don't mess with this guy in the arcade. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's like Tommy, it's like a playing, Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Hey, we hey, we got somebody that can beat you. Mm -hmm. hey, and that's and that's good because hey, we're building up our uh, our arcade team. So that's right. Oh, dang, oh, dang. Mm. Give me Galaga. Give me Tetris. Those are the only two games I'm good at. Yeah. Uh, good it. games to be good at too. Uh, we got that. Tetris hey, is tough. That's... I'm good at it's so hard. We got somebody that's good at Tekken. D's good at air hockey. Yeah, I don't know what right. Trav's good in, but uh, I'm, you know, I gotta say, I'm pretty good at air hockey as well, man. Mm. Yeah. Chal challenge accepted. I will uh, give you a mm. run for your money. Woo! Hey, I like that. Hey, play I the anime it. music from Hunter Hunter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. What other hobbies? I've been yeah. uh, collecting uh, marbles. <laughs> oh wow recently. that's interesting uh yeah. and you're a very retro person it seems. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i was thinking very the same retro. thing yeah very. you got Call pogs, him retro dude? that's his hero oh. name retro i, I said I you like got it. pogs too. what are pogs like, oh we those? got them oh we got them for now for now pogs, he's probably gonna google it pogs are like now. little circle things that you would stack up and they had like these slammers oh my mm -hmm. isn't it what the elementary school did you yeah. do to my brain yeah. yeah isn't that similar to what they was playing in uh squid games when they were mm -hmm. throwing the, the paper mm -hmm. on the ground yeah 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 i've never seen squid games oh, oh dude you gotta wow, see squid game guy. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, I have just other animated versions like Squid Games. I've just never specifically seen Squid Games. Yeah, there are a few anime out there kind of like Squid Games. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that's true. why, you know, and of course, I'm not crapping on Squid Games or anything. It's just no. that when it became hot stuff, I was like, dude, I've already seen this like three or four times. That's and true. That's I, true. I was like, yeah. why didn't these other ones get recognition when people saw them? It was yeah. like, yo, this is crazy. Is so people don't watch anime, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but see, anime. that's a, that's the thing with the development and exposure that we have now. This is one mm -hmm. of those things. Yeah. Like, dude, we were the only people watching uh, Sword Art Online Bro, and now, that, all that stuff. Now yeah. I want to hit that Amazon and order me like some jacks. <clears throat> Some marbles, uh, some, yeah. some marbles pogs and slammers. I, got, I have this. I have this marble that's about the size of like <laughs> my palm. I call him Butterball. Jeez. Nice. <laughs> what do you? I thought he was about, uh, hey, I thought he was about to say Breaker. Uh, yeah. Butterball has broken two plates by oh, wow. accident. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so uh, I gotta, I gotta know now, Karen. Mm -hmm. Give us what, what's, give us a third hobby. I'm just curious to see what your answer is now. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're intrigued. Come on, yeah, come on, retro. Yeah. Uh, look, I gotta say, I've been trying to find the perfect chili recipe. Ooh. Uh, you know what Me? I mean? I'm talking like traditional chili. I'm talking I, hey, I'll send you a link. Yeah. Uh, hey, look. Hey, I've, I I've know been, a guy. I've, 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 we had my mom's Polish chili when yeah. we were hmm. growing up, all that stuff. You have kielbasa, you get mustard, ketchup, uh, barbecue well, sauce love. in there, and you. Hey, I've, never, uh, I've never tried it with barbecue sauce. Yeah, I know uh, the link good. the link that I'm gonna send you because I had never made chili before mm -hmm. and I had made it for uh, a Amateur. Christmas party one year and it's just like everybody destroyed it. Like it was only like a, a small hand bowl of chili left and I cooked it in a crock pot. So ah, dang, oh, let's yeah. go. So that I, must I'll been. send you the link. Crock pots, man, they make the house smell good. Yeah, you that's know? exactly what they hey, before, do. Mm. Before air fryers, crock pots ruled the, the kitchen, damn it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure right. it was something before. Oh, uh, what was it before the crock pots? I'm, uh, what, just a pan on the stove? Nothing. What's it called? They was just Maybe an old on. school uh, a kettle. All raw. Kettle, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. Man, yo, when I was a kid, 
I thought we was rich because we had a, a toaster oven, man. And... <laughs> I have a toaster oven right now. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. I, I know we used to make the grilled cheese sandwiches and that. And like mm. whenever I would go to my grandma's house and we make grilled cheese, I was just like, it's you not make the, the same. pizza toast? No, nah, I never did that. That's too far. You take right the now. you take the bread, you put some pizza sauce on it with some cheese and pepperoni, and you put them in the toaster oven. Mm -hmm. My nana used to make them, and I was nana. nana, can I get some of that pizza toast? You ever had like a pizza bagel? Yeah, oh, man, I, love bagel I haven't had that since I was a kid, though. Pizza bagels, man. Hey, I'm trying to think level. of the song. How did it go? Uh, Fruit salad. Because when pizza's yummy. on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. Got something know. like that, Trav. You can't. Bagel <laughs> I don't know bites. About that, Trav. It killed it. Go to your local grocery. Get yeah. some, some bagel bites. <laughs> yes, sir. Trav. You're trying to get us a sponsor up I'm here. I like get, it. Hey, those Tinos, baby. Hey, I, don't know what, I don't know what what kind of grocery stores do y'all have where you're from? Because I know they're different out yeah, here. They're different. Wally World. And we got Food Lion and Walmart, Kroger. Uh, Wegmans. We got uh, Wegmans now. That's a recent one. I mean, yeah. do y'all got the Piggly Wiggly? Nah, I think that's only us, bro. No, nah, we ain't got no Piggly Wiggly. What yeah, Piggly no, we Wiggly? still nah, bro. They, there's Piggly Wigglies in the hood. There's one right around the corner from me and D. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, and we don't I live don't in the hood either, but it's around nah, the corner. Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. What you got over in Kansas? Uh, well, in Kansas we had Dylan's and Aldi's. Yeah, he's back. I've on never heard of Dylan's. We got Aldi's. We got Aldi's. I've never heard of. We have Aldi's. 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 What are you, Aldi's is the Wild West of freaking grocery stores. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, what do you, what do you, you cart, guys have you on the bag west? your own groceries huh? on the west what coast? do you have on the west coast uh, yeah. albertson's we got albertson's we got um do you guys have walmart's out there yeah we got walmart's was, uh, albertson's nice walmart's chain. ralph's i know y'all got dollar general everybody got dollar general look dollar general is uh do you have 99 cent 99 cents not anymore mm -hmm. it's dollar tree plus baby. dollar tree plus now oh really and they a dollar twenty five. Dollar twenty five. Times is tough. Tree, no. That's highway robbery. Yeah. Boycott. <laughs> Boycott. Boycott. Yeah, I can't Ooh. remember the the second question <clears throat> I was going to ask. It'll probably come back to me. But D, go ahead and ask your favorite question. Questions. Yes. How many weeks are you gonna say question? Like it's literally one question. Twenty. Sometimes just, I just I let him slide for like ten weeks. Because he just right? he disrespecting the questions. Bro. That's how he is. All right, Karen, I'd like to ask two wrap-up questions. First and foremost, favorite 80s or 90s movie? Or both, if you have one. You're retro, so I'm curious. Okay, okay. 80s Jack's 90s. the movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> Marble High Rollers? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Though there is a YouTube Marble Racing channel. You should look it up. It's okay. called Jell's Marble <laughs> Racing. What's it called? <laughs> it's called Jell's. Oh, J-E-L-L-E. Oh, I, I know what I'm doing uh, on my lunch break tomorrow. Look, I, I swear they have the they have Marble Olympics. I am um, wow. Team Balls of Chaos. So <laughs> I heard I like that. that balls <laughs> I gotta chaos. look this stuff up. But um, I gotta say, uh, Short Circuit is up there. I really Ooh. like Short Circuit. Okay, you don't hear that a lot. No, yeah. that's a good answer. Short Circuit. That's a good answer. Short Circuit's up there. Um, the animated Robin Hood movie. I don't know when mm -hmm. that came out. The Disney, the Disney, Disney one. Yeah, it, the Disney. One. Yeah, it yeah, came that's out a like classic. In the in the 40s the 50s yeah yeah we're going mm -hmm. retro retro <laughs> yeah i'll give you that one because you're retro I'll, I'll take your answers tonight okay. um but yeah that's those, a good movie those two are my those are those are my go-to movies oh yeah yeah uh my second question kieran mm -hmm. growing up was there anything that really spooked you and stayed with you or scared you in general whether it was a, a soundtrack from a movie a movie something spooky on a cartoon a tv Killer show marbles. what you got Oh, no. Hey, attack of the killer tomatoes. I was gonna say they got a killer couch, a killer tiger, a yeah, killer donut. Killer I know. Hey, there's remember, a hey, Marvel movie. remember the remember the toilet from uh, Look Who's Talking. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Potter. Hey, it was marbles and squid game. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. uh, so what you got, Karen? Uh, I was I so I thought you were originally asking about um like true true crime experiences, which Ooh, I have no. had a few. Whoa. Um, you do kind of look like a young what? Dexter, so we ain't going to talk say, about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's <laughs> nothing on my end. It's just my, <laughs> oh, no, no. the wrong time. Yeah, hey, that's what Dexter would have told him, too. <laughs> wrong look, wrong all right. Time. You sound like a Dexter. Uh-huh. He got the bar. Y'all are already on my case. Get off. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Well, but, hey, hey, he was talking yeah. to Trav. He won't talk to me and D. You no. <laughs> no, really? 
No, yeah. go ahead, Karen. So what? Uh, I mean, you can. You're free to talk about that if you like, or you could just uh, oh. go with uh, Friday the Thirteenth, and we could get out of here. I, I, mean, I, I think it was. Uh, you remember the Mummy, the movie, The Mummy with Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Yep. Fraser? Mm -hmm. You remember Love the Brendan Beatles Fraser. scene where the Beatle is crawling on? Yep, going into. Yeah, that, oh, that yeah. freaked me out as a kid. Oh yeah, for sure. I remember seeing that and then hating that movie for the rest of my life. I was like, very oh. eerie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I thought those bugs and leeches were going to be more of a problem uh, for me when yeah, I was an adult. Uh, yeah. All right, well, oh bro, hey, living I in just know we thought cockroaches was trying to kill us, man. Yeah, I just remember speaking of leeches, bugs. Trav. Um, what's the name of the movie? Uh, Stand by Me. Stand by when Me. Went, yeah. yeah, when they were swimming and they were, oh uh, man, and the leeches. That had me worried about lake water and stuff like that. Have y'all ever time. had leeches attached to y'all? No, no. Yeah, nah, same. Never. never. Yeah, it's just spooky. They're I very know, creepy. The water bugs will get you though. Oh uh, yeah, yeah hey, watch out. Hey, I saw one in the den the other night. I was just like, oh man, they're coming back. <laughs> hey, a water a water bug show up. Banks shuts down. He don't mm -hmm. know what to do. He start looking around. <laughs> We was interviewing Aaron Phillips, and like he sitting here talking, and I'm just sitting here looking at the water bug the entire time. I'm just like, bro, what the heck is a water bug? It is. It's a giant... literally like a little black beetle that's like this big. That no, for some it's reason, not that big. Banks Rav. thinks it's like this yeah. Godzilla. Karen, I'll send you a picture. These him. things are huge. Okay, this guy. Guy. He, I, 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 no, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to send you a picture of a water bug or if I want to send you the link to the chili because it might traumatize you, man. You yeah, let's keep the man on the right track. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Send send me, tried send water me, bug send chili. chili. Send, send me him the chili. chili. Hey, yeah. I, well, I mean, I know you know we're at the end of this, but I mean, Karen, he did some voice overwork and Fallout, and you know mm -hmm. they eat the rad roaches in that game. So yeah, right. they do. Yeah. What's that one so. movie where um the whole uh, they're on a train? And they uh, catch the cockroaches, grind them up, and eat them in bars, and that's like wow, halfway amazing. through. The movie. Oh, that that's um, Snowpiercer. Uh, Snowpiercer. Oh, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, say, I ain't heard of that. I was part. thinking that's how they get their protein. So pretty yep. much everybody in the back of the train eats these protein bars, and it's just meshed up bugs and garbage, uh, pretty much. Yep. So they can eat all the water bugs they want. Yeah, but then That's the right. people who make a lot of money are in the front of the train eating sushi and That's right. young. living it yeah. up. That's a very, uh, it's a cool uh, premise to a movie. Dude, mm -hmm. it's an incredible show. Yeah. The show's even better than the movie. I love I the, show. the show. It's got the I've Fondigs the in it from Hamilton. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Oh, dang. He so, played Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. Yeah, sold me. I remember <laughs> the question that I was going to ask now because we are in the year 2022. And it mm -hmm. is my birthday month. And, uh, oh. you know, everybody, they want to do something this year. So I wanted to ask you, if you can give me three, if you have three, what are three animes that you would love to lend your voice to in this year? Oh, man. I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen. Nice. Uh, and we know people we, from that. We'll go put in yeah, the word. That would be awesome. <laughs> Right. You'll put in the word. Great, thank you. I'll call Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> we'll call, hey, no, no, for real. Matthew David Rudd, Laura Post, they're up there. You know, yeah. We'll slide um, in the DM. Hmm. I have shows that I want to be in that aren't exactly anime. Can I use that? Oh, oh yeah, 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 sure, uh -huh. sure. Arcane. <laughs> Oh, okay. I still have not know. seen Arcane. I've You're heard doing good things yourself about a disservice. It. You're doing yourself a disservice. Oh, I, I hear. I hear it's a tearjerker. One of the best animated shows since Avatar: The Last Airbender. I swear. Mm. Yeah, I started. Okay. Uh, I think I'm on episode six of Arcane. How how, how are you liking it so far? Tell it's, me. About it's it. I like it. I think yeah. it's unique. You know, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I know a little bit of where where it comes from. You know, uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, I think it's League of Legends. Yeah, so yes. I know yeah, a lot yeah. of people that played it. So just like mm -hmm. Dota too, like the uh, anime Dota, and then Dota. Witcher anime. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like you have people who never played the video games, but they watch the animes and then they want to go and play the video games. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how it works. So Arcane, and then and, uh, um, yeah, and then uh, there's this cute little show on Netflix called Hilda. Um, oh, I love Hilda. Actually, Hilda? my youngest daughter has all the Hilda. Like they're not mangas. I don't know what uh -huh. you call them. They're they're like graphic novels. Yeah, they're like graphic novels. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. I I love the style of Hilda. I love mm -hmm. the coming from a graphic designer background. It's mm -hmm. just I'm looking at it. It's just one of the most beautifully animated shows, in my opinion, in in terms of like a modern graphic style. Right. That oh 
I would, because my baby brother watches that. He's 12. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, oh, come on. Got it. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. If uh, he, he, I already got, he, I was already in a show because uh, Kato is online. Right. He was watching YouTube and a Kato popped up. And he was, he got to the credits. And he said, that's my, he was like, you're in the show? What? That's always a good feeling. Yeah. You know, so right. That that's pretty awesome. awesome. We, we've heard <laughs> that before from voice actors that it's like when, their nephews or little cousins see their name in the credit or hear their name you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying because uh-huh. it's different uh-huh. if you if you're putting on a voice but when they hear your voice they're just like oh like that's my uncle that's my brother so that's I was, always a good feeling i was gonna let me circle back to spirit chronicles real quick do you watch that weekly as it's coming out then yes uh, okay. i actually have a group of folks and uh my significant other and a few others in uh, kansas that we all get on discord and we watch, watch the episode hey, that's pretty cool that's so cool pretty awesome hey, it's kind of like cringe. when uh like draft day for football players when they got oh, yeah. the whole family they're waiting to be drafted yes yes awesome. but every week sick. on monday yeah yeah <laughs> it's coming now, out every week on monday so every, every yep every monday on crunchy mm-hmm. hey plug now, it karen i want to um yeah you can pl- go ahead and plug it if you want you know oh, he already did Okay, good. You said plug it, so I was like, no, I was just, yeah. no, I was just saying he was talking about it, so that's what right. I was like, yeah, plug that's it. what I'm talking about. All right, no, but Karen, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm not done with you, Banks. You don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, Karen, um, one one thing I want to ask you before we, you know, wrap up: Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons or any tabletop? Bruh. Oh, this D made will take the headset on. Victory! Look at these guys. Woohoo! I got the manuals. Okay. All right. Give me one moment. And we're in business. Hey, see, this is something that could have been listed in the hobbies, but we saved the best for last. And uh, Karen, he had to go and pick up his stuff. He's showing it us. And make sure that you watch this on YouTube so that way that you can see everything. Yeah. I got a little something. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is my uh, my figure, my knight from back in the day, or my ranger. It's what I used I to love, use. Love. Painted it myself. So here I got yeah, some. My guy. I got some dice in here. These are all my metal ones. Oh yeah, a little dice mm-hmm. goblin. I DM two campaigns, and I'm. A oh yeah, because player, so. I just you know your manipulation of your voice is pretty good, and it just kind of reminded me of a good DM. Yeah, so I just figured I'd ask if you did by any chance. So. Yeah, man. Hell I have yeah. Two campaigns going right now. One is a New Orleans uh, sort of ghost hunting campaign called the Swamp like Chronicles, and That's they're sick. Uh, yeah, it's set in this world where the fourteen primal human fears are the gods, and they're trying to rise into the world. And the Swamp Chronicles are the people trying to stop their rituals from happening. And then the other one. Sick. I just started it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the Inverted Territory, and it's like a um, cowboy western themed campaign. I love it. So it's pretty sweet. Like you got to do a lot it's of southern sweet. accents with that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Gives hey, you hey, great hey. practice too. Yeah, so, I was man. gonna say that's another uh, link that that's another uh, link that uh you know now D you got to send the link so that way that's you right. can join and, the camp. Yeah, we we gonna drink oh, to that. Yeah. It may not be Agua Moss. Yeah, I got my remote. The, that's you know, but it's yeah. something. Yeah, uh, stay thirsty, my friends. Mm-hmm. I, I got this uh the proto man. I mean, I got that, but uh yeah, there he is. But there hey, is. you know. What an awesome episode. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us up here, man. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Before we let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Oh, man. You can find me at Kieran Regan VA most everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, it's Kieran spelled K-I-E-R-A-N and then Regan, R-E-G-A-N. So we're glitching out over here, so we should probably get oh, out of here. Said, <laughs> hey, Bruno said, I've been waiting all episode for this. Oh, man, he coming out of the walls right now. Mm-hmm. The aliens are getting him. Uh, yeah, hey, bang, they snatched D right on up, Trav. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched Aliens on New Year's. Uh, I watched Cobra Kai. I have a friend who does the um, uh, Xenomorph suit for... Uh-huh. Oh, nice. that's so cool. He's the alien in Aliens, so... Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, on uh, Aliens? Uh, I don't know which one he's in i just know that he does xenomorph suit stuff oh that's like, so cool is he in the uh the new movies or he's just a christian general? christian legacy um here I'll, I'll type him in the chat okay uh yeah that's really cool 
Christian Lagasse. You you might want to talk to him at some point. Dude's cool. Yeah. I'm uh I'm looking him up right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know y'all thought Michael snatched me up. Yeah, we thought I did that on purpose. We were concerned. Hey, it's the post credit know, scene. We're glad you're yeah, here. I, yeah, yeah. Michael <laughs> snatched me up. Karen was. I thought it was part of uh, one of the campaigns. <laughs> uh, hey, it's just like the uh, the episodes of Bolt. You ended on a cliffhanger, so that way people want to know what happened to D next. But Karen, thank you so much again for joining us. Trav, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. That's right. I am on the Instagram at ZK Audio. I'm also on the Twitter at T R A V I O S C K. Where I'm also on Letterbox, ranking and rating my daily movie watches. D, where they gonna find my man at? Michael doesn't snatch me up. You can find me at rebellious double underscore D twenty three Instagram dot com. And Banks, they need a hero. Where can they find one? You can find me at hero Benjamin Banks at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, everybody, for watching our new episode. Make sure that you check out some more of our interviews that we have here on the channel, along with reaction videos and reviews. Like I always say, it's my birthday month. Keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next time on Love On Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.